yeah good afternoon everyone of you so uh, until the last class we have completed unit 2 then today we are going to start our unit 3 which is uh, titled as resins plasticizers and additives as the name indicates we have to discuss all this one resins or binders then plasticizers what are their uses properties additives uh, what are their uses to some extent this additives we have discussed in unit 1 itself what is what are their uses how to use this additives what type of properties they will impart for the organic coatings we have discussed this one then the contents of this uh, unit 3 is natural resins okay there are two types of natural resins are there one is a, a, a rosin then second, uh, second one is a shellac okay this rosin is derived from the plant based sources and this shellac is derived from the animal based or insect based sources petroleum or insect based sources so their properties their uses and uh, what the properties they will contribute for the coatings we have to discuss them then next one is the synthetic resins okay these are the natural resins this two types and out of the synthetic resins so only around six resins we have to discuss alkyd resins phenolic resins epoxies chlorinated rubber vinyl uh, resins okay this 1 uh, 2 3 4 5 okay around five resins we have to discuss then next one this one is solvents and its blend properties so what are the thinners what are different types of thinners are there what they will give the properties to the blend overall paint vehicle and uh, overall paint with the additives what type of uh, properties they will impart for the coatings we have to study in this one and criteria for their selection criteria for the selection of solvents we have to what criteria we have to follow for selection of various solvents for various applications the next one is the plasticizers so what are the plasticizers various plasticizers are there what are their properties and what types of plasticizers are there and their application according to the application how we can classify we have to see in the plasticizer section then final topic is the additives so various additives are there what are their uses to some extent we have seen in the unit 1 and here different types of additives like as a dryers additives as a dryers additives as a dispersing agent additives as a anti skinning agents and additives as a leveling agent so this four criteria we have to see in the additives in this unit 3 so these are the overall contents in your um, so unit 3 syllabus then resins are there so first we have to first topic is a resin we have to study so resins can be resins is an any type of natural or synthetic compound consisting of any uh, non crystalline or viscous liquid substance these are non crystalline or they will called as a viscous uh, liquid substance these are the liquid substance so this paint resins okay whatever the resins which we are employing in the paints depending on this resin only the paint paint forming capability of that paint depends okay depending on this only this resin how that resin behavior is there that paint film properties so it has to deposit whenever we are painting some substrate it has to deposit some film on to that one whether a thin film or a thick film it has to de uh, deposit that entire film property will be dependent only on this resin or binder so resins are usually also called as a uh, binders so resin is the film forming compound that identifies the paint so identity entire identity of the paint will be dependent on this resin only so a variety of resins and polymers so this resins or polymers usually undergo a reaction to form a resin or a film inside that particular paint okay these resins are obviously used in many types of paints so the we know the paint vehicle so paint vehicle is nothing but a blend of resin plus solvent is called as a paint vehicle so apart from that one if we require certain properties extra properties we will add additives apart from uh, this extra properties if required for the color okay we will add some additives some extended properties are required some extenders we will add so all this will be added but to uh, manufacture a paint a paint vehicle is needed that paint vehicle is nothing but a solvent mixture or a blend of solvent plus this resin is called as a paint vehicle so the identity entire identity of that particular paint will be dependent only on this uh, only on the resin or film formers or binders we can call so all three are same resin or binder or a film formers all three are same then resins can be classified based on the source 
they are classified as a natural resin or synthetic resin then based on the application they will be classified as a convertible and non convertible resin first we will see what is this one so resins can be classified based on the source as a natural resin and as a synthetic resins so the natural resins are typically um, uh, they will be found from the natural sources only okay they are further classified they are further classified into two types one is based on their source okay based on how we obtain that particular resin whether we are obtaining that particular resin from the plant based sources or we are obtaining that particular resin uh, depending on the uh, other sources like a insect based on some petroleum fractions we are obtaining that resins depending on that one based on their source the natural resins are classified into two types one is a petroleum based and next one is a uh, pet, um, <clears throat> plant based resins so next one is a based on solubility so based on solubility the resins are classified as oil soluble okay if the particular resin is oil soluble so we will divide them in the category you will be placed that them in the category of oil soluble if the resin is soluble in only spirit type of compounds or alcohol type of compounds so that uh, is separate classification so based on the source they are divided into two types one is a natural resin and second one is a synthetic resin and based on the uh, source the natural resins are divided natural resins are divided into two types based on source and solubility and based on the source there are two types of resin one is a plant based and next one is a petroleum or insect based then based on the solubility they are further divided into two types one is a oil soluble and next one is a spirit soluble then in the synthetic there are two types of uh, examples uh, for the synthetic resins which are thermoplastic and thermosetting plastics these two are the synthetic examples the examples for the plant based uh, resins are rosin and amber then petroleum based and insect based uh, examples are shellac and lacquer so then the based on solubility so oil soluble resin examples are rosin amber cashew nut shell oil these are all the examples for which will be dissolving it will be solubilizing with the oil then if they are soluble in spirit their examples are balsam turpentine dragon's blood these three are the examples for the spirit soluble then in the synthetic there are two examples for synthetic uh, resins so they are uh, thermoplastic and thermosetting plastic and finally based on the application they are divided into two types one is a convertible type of resin and non convertible type of paint okay these are the paints convertible paints and non convertible paints if they are used in the convertible type of paints then the these examples are oil oleo resinous varnish alkyd resins amino resins epoxy resins phenolic resins polyurethane resins thermosetting acrylics then if they are used in non convertible paints then the examples for that type of resins are cellulose nitrocellulose then chlorinated rubber and vinyl chloride so um, okay the terms which are placed in green color and bold so they are uh, there in your syllabus okay only these components we have to discuss in detail apart from this this all are the classification of resins okay rosin you have to study in detail what are the what is rosin then uh, what are their properties what are their uses in the organic coatings then shellac what are their sources okay what type of uh, shellac it is how we can obtain shellac and what are the ideal properties of it and uh, what are their uses in the organic coatings we have to study this one then here also one rosin is there so same rosin this and that one then next one is here in the based on application we have to start study alkyd resins uh, in detail epoxy resins and phenolic resins in detail then in the category of non convertible paints we have to study chlorinated rubber and vinyl resin also we have to study this one so this is the classification of resins or resins binders so typically what happens this natural resins are fusible and also flammable organic substances that are transparent and translucent so usually they will be in yellowish color or it will be in a brownish uh, brown color so yellowish to brown color so they are formed from the plant secretion or excretion we can say uh, secretion and are soluble in various organic liquids but not in a water they will be soluble in various organic liquids they are not soluble in the water so the natural resins are classified based on the source as plant based and also in the um, petroleum and insect based 
so based on the plant sources there are two types of resins they are uh, um, um, so these plant based resins are extracted from the plants itself so especially from the pine plants or the fir plants so this resin formation occurs as a result of injury to the bark from wind fire lightning or other causes usually this plant based resins will be looking like this so usually if you just injure some plant here so due to this injury they will just excrete some of the resin like components so that is called as a rosin so usually they will be formed they will be found as a yellow or a brownish color or brown color so due to the damage to the plant due to some uh, injury to the plant that plant will excrete some of the uh, compounds some of the compound which we are calling as a resin here then next one is a petroleum and insect based so these are the compounds secreted by the female lac bug so lac bug will be there that lac bug bug will be just excreting that one so excreting means they will leave their waste as a uh, that lac bug will be just leaving as a um, as a, as a waste their waste will be just deposited on that branch of that particular plant so natural resins uh, may be classified further so see this synthetic resin okay due to the excretion of that particular lac bug female lac bug this lac bug bug will be just excreting whatever uh, waste is there that will be excreting on the plant like this after excreting we have to process this one in order to obtain the shellac like this one so the shellac the compound which is obtained from the uh, shellac uh, obtained from the insect based sources or the petroleum based source is called as a shellac so that shellac is excreted by the female lac bug so this female lac bug whatever the excreted they will be extracted and processed and applied for the heat treatment then we can obtain a thin sheets or the flakes of this particular shellac like compound this is also one type of resin so this two are the examples this is a plant based resin due to the damage to the plant caused by uh, the particular injury so because of that injury they are excreting due to the female lac bugs whatever the excretion is there that excretion we are extracting and processing it to in some natural flakes so that is coming under natural uh, based on the source in the natural category uh, then further if you see based on the solubility natural resins are divided into uh, this oil soluble and spirit soluble so so oil soluble we already know spirit soluble these these are the spirit solubles which soluble in spirits so that spirits okay derived spirits whatever the derivatives of that particular spirits are there alcohol like components they are all soluble in that one so balsam the examples for this one is a um, balsam so this balsam will popularly find application in he, as a healing agent okay in many types of healing ointments and everything you can be observed this compound which is called as a balsam and turpentines turpentines we will call this as a white kerosene if you remember uh, in the paints we will use turpentine oil so that is called as a solvent here so turpentine oil uh, is also derived from the natural sources only uh, then next one is a uh, uh matrix various matrix will be there so dragon's blood one type of resin it will be uh, coming uh okay one type of resin this is also then based on the solubility they are also divided into oil soluble oil soluble as a name indicates they are soluble in oil like compounds or the organic compound or their derivatives like first one is rosin whatever the damage caused to the plant due to the damage they will uh, excrete some of the segregate some of the resin so that we are calling as a rosin here uh, then next one is a amber so so this amber amber is a hardest natural material fabricated in the many jewelries in the jewelries this is used as some hardest natural material in the jewelry operations then cashew nut oil so this cashew nut oil will be derived from the cashew nuts as the name indicates from the cashew nut shells will be there that shells from that shells the oil can be extracted this is also oil soluble compound so this is also used as a natural resin and amber is uh, many applications it, uh, will be find out from the amber for this uh, jewelry operation in the jewelry manufacturing operations then in the synthetic as the name indicates these are synthetic we have to uh, synthesize from the external sources these are uh, popularly comes under the category of Uh, synthetic plastics category so 
so this synthetic plastics categories are thermoplastic and thermosetting plastics then based on the application they are divided into convertible and non convertible so this convertible or the materials that are used in an unpolymerized or partially polymerized state so they will undergo a reaction to form a solid film after applying to the substrate substrate so usually the convertible films after applying to the substrate they will go undergo a reaction and then they will form a uh, what we call this film they will form they will form a solid film after we apply on the substrate they will undergo their reaction after application but con non convertible uh, they will before that only we, they will form a reaction they will undergo a reaction the full reaction polymerized reaction and they will form a offer a film to the substrate so that is a convert non convertible and after application to the substrate whatever the film they are forming due to the reaction so that is called as a convertible if they are forming before uh, before applying to the substrate if they are forming a film so that is called as a non convertible if they are undergoing a reaction then only they are forming a film after applying to the substrate so that is called as a convertible film so the popular examples for this convertible type of resins are oil volio uh, resinous varnish alkyd resins amino resins epoxy resins phenolic resins polyurethane resins thermosetting acrylics then uh, before applying to the substrate when they are uh, forming a film uh, by reaction the polymerized reaction so that uh, types of examples are cellulose nitrocellulose chlorinated rubber and vinyl resins so these are the clarific uh, classifications of various resins or binders or various film formers okay is that clear the classification so out of this classification only uh, the terms which which have given in the bold and green color you have to study is it okay yes sir are you catching my point or not okay yes sir Okay, then next one is this one yeah rosin yeah rosin so rosin so as a name indicates see this one so this is the plant based uh, one type of resin this is also called as a colophony this is also called as a colophony which is obtained in a solidified form and it will be processed in some volatile terpen terpenes okay terpenes is also one type of uh, natural compounds they are usually derived from the um this plant sources only so after removing this uh, uh, whatever the deposited resins they have to be processed in a distillation column in order to get some liquid like uh, liquid like compound volatile compound like a rosin rosin is also called as a colophony so this colophony is the result of some damage or injury to the plant usually to the pine trees or the fir trees uh, from the uh, fir trees if you create some injury here so they will excrete some of the Uh, resin like components do this does resin like components will be looking like a yellow color or yellowish color or the brownish dark brownish color so this will be obtained from the plants and will be processed in a distillation uh, unit there we can obtain a um, volatile organic liquid like of resin so typically this resin is a trans uh, transparent and also a translucent mass with a vitreous fracture and a faintly yellow and brown color this usually have a non odoriferous so or slightly turpentine like this white kerosene like of uh, odor they will contains or sometimes they will not at all have any odor so resins are insoluble in water this resins are insoluble in water mostly they will be soluble in the alcohol or essential oils or ethers or many types of high fatty oils okay high fatty uh, fatty oils they will be soluble but they are not soluble in water so resin rosin often they will be softened and melts under the influence of heat if you apply a heat here so they will be just uh, uh, melting they will be melting down usually when they are melting or they when they are burning so what happens they will be burned with a bright but very smoky uh, flame with a smoky flame they will be burning so rosins consist of a complex mixture of different substances various uh, that can include organic solids organic acids uh, which can be called as a resin acids so usually they will be a complex mixture of resin acids which can be found only in the plants so resins are uh, this resin acids are the oxidizer terpenes so terpenes as the uh, as a, i suggested that one 
this terpenes is also one type of natural compounds they will be producing from the plant based sources so this resin acids whatever are there whatever find out in the rosin so are the oxidized terpenes or nothing but an oxidized terpenes so various examples of this uh, uh, rosin acids whatever the resin acids are there or nothing but uh, pimeric acid plicatic acid or uh, abetic acid these are the acids which are especially found out in the uh, uh, categorized in the category of resin of acids so these are organic uh, oxidized terpenes usually they will be found in the form of oxidized terpenes so resin is usually obtained from the pine trees or some fir trees so this pine trees are nothing but a conifers so there are many types of properties are there for the rosin so rosin is very brittle and also a friable with a painty fine piney odor okay small uh, uh, turpentine odor a very little bit turpentine odor will be coming or otherwise it's completely an odorless uh, compound so this is also a one property and this is also one brittle uh, component this is also a one property so it is a glossy solid so this will be looking like a glossy solid it naturally it will contain some glossy light of substance so it is very flammable burning with a smoky flame so it will be flammable compound so that will be burning with a smoky very smoky flame but with a bright very bright uh, uh, flame with a smoky flame it will be burning so it is soluble in alcohol ether benzene and chloroform these are the properties of this rosin compounds usually this rosin will be employed in printing inks okay they will find uh, application in the printing inks after uh, molding this whatever the rosin are uh, extracted from the plants after molding this according to our requirements in the distillation column so that uh, particular rosins rosin acids will be used in many applications like a printing as as in a printing ink or in a photocopying and laser printing uh, papers in also varnishes as a adhesives as a glue adhesive nothing but as a glue for various uh, uh, attaching of cardboards or this uh, wood wood materials uh, carpenters will use this one as a glue also it will be supporting then in the many types of soaps also we can find application for this uh, rosin there also as a paper sizing materials okay to uh, to get a good sizing of a paper cutting properties of the paper we can use this rosin as a uh, paper sizing material there and also in many types of sodas uh, many types of soldering fluxes as a soldering flux okay whenever electrical people they will solder two types of metals so they will be adding uh, they will be using this as a flux okay then next one uh, they will be a natural waxing material they will be used as a natural waxing materials then they also used as a glazing agent in medicines and in various chewing gums so they will be find uh, a small quantity of this one will be found out in the medicines in many types of chewing gums also they will be found out so usually uh, this type of compounds rosin type of compounds when they are used in the food uh, food manufacturing they will be labeled this type of component as a e915 so the code word for this rosin when they are used for uh, in the food manufacturing is e915 you can find out the name not with the rosin name uh, label um, so back side of the ingredients label whatever the packet you are procuring if that contains the rosin they will be having a code word like e915 if e915 is there so that particular product will contain this rosin or colophony as one type of ingredient into this one so usually they will be found in many uh, in a tiny quantities in a medicinal uh, in the medicines or in many types of chewing gums so this is also having a very much high pharmaceutical applications so pharmaceutical applications forms an ingredients in many types of plasters and in ointments also we can use this type of rosins so <clears throat> so they are very much uh, they are very much used in this uh, friction type of uh, um, due to its large friction type of activities they are very much used for its friction increasing capacity in several fields okay in the irish dancing or in some ballet dancing or say in some uh, what we say flamenco dancing so flamenco dancing on this one dancing so usually they will lift all the uh, this what we say up to the toe using the toe only they will be dancing like this so using this toe only they will be dancing irish dancing or this ballet dancing or this flamenco flamenco dancing we will call so this flamenco dancing all three dances 
so they will be offering some plastic type of shoes so in order to get a good support good friction or a good friction capacity of that particular uh, uh, shoe what happens in order to lower the slippage okay lower the slippage from the ground okay what happens they will be just rubbing their shoes using the rosins okay in order to reduce the slippage on a clean wooden surface or the clean wooden floors okay during their performance in the stages like a ballet dance or this flamenco dance or the irish dance so in the irish dance every this three types of dances usually they will perform using some suitable shoe up to lifted up to their toe so because of this they want a heavy support they want heavy frictional support on the ground otherwise that will be causing a slippage on the ground so if, if the slippage is cross, uh, uh, causing they will be just fell down and causing a injury in order to lower that slippage so they will be used as a support a good support a good friction support towards the ground so this three dancers will be using this rosin as one type of um, compound so that they can uh, just rub their shoes to that one so that it can be lowered their slippage and also in the during the olympic uh, weight lift, lifting uh, competition also usually the olympic weight lifters their shoes or their boots they will be rubbing using this uh, rosin so after rubbing only they will lift that one so otherwise when they are lifting to the uh, very heavy weights so they will be losing a traction traction on the platform on this platform see this platform they will be losing a traction if they are losing a traction there will be a slippage if there is a slippage they will be fell down there is a chance of injury so because of this reason usually during the dancing and during the weight lifting processing also this uh, they will usually rub that their shoes or boots whatever it may be they will be rubbing using this rosin like compounds or a rosin compounds then only a proper friction will be there in the ground and in their shoe so this is a rosin is it clear rosin if you have any doubts you can ask is it clear yes sir yeah okay then next one is a shellac okay this is also a natural resin but the origin of this resin is from the uh, insect source but the origin of this type of resin or a rosin is the plant based source so this shellac so what is this shellac it is also a resin but it is excreted or is secreted by the female lag bug so this is a female lag bug on trees in the forest of uh, many our our forests like indian forests or in thailands usually this type of lag bug female lag bugs will be finding uh, uh, finding then they will be just excreting their lac or their waste like this on the wood on the plants or the trees so after uh, uh, excreting the female lag bugs excreted they will be processed and sold as a dry flakes and dissolved in alcohol to make the liquid shellac so to make the liquid shellac they has to be processed in suitable using su some suitable technique and also they will be dissolved in alcohol to make the liquid shellac if you want a liquid shellac we have to dissolve in some suitable type of alcohol so which can be used in some type of uh, uh, as a brush and colorants or some uh, food glazing material or in some wood finishing material as a wood finishing material also we can use this type of shellac material so shellac usually functions as a tough primer so they are categorized they are used in especially in the primers and sand sealants or the sanding sealants we will call or tanning blockers or odor blockers or stain and high gloss of varnish in a varnish also we can use in a primer also we can use to give a tough very tough primer as well as to give a heavy gloss so as a, as you can see the gloss of this shellac is very high okay irrespective of their color the gloss is very high so because of this they are very much used in the varnishes and also as a priming agents so uh, shellac usually shellacs once upon a time they are uh, used in electrical applications also because of their heavy high insulating properties they are good insulators so because of this uh, good insulating properties they are usually applied in the electrical uh, wires or something uh, something electrical wire manufacturing everything the not now so 
now the polyurethanes or something like components they are using but uh, in the previous those olden days they will be using shellac because this also uh, have a good insulating properties as well as it is also having a good sealing properties against moisture so moisture will not be catched by that particular electrical material and also it is a good insulating material because of this advantage this shellacs are usually used in the uh, in the good olden days as a insulating material in electrical manufacturing or in electrical applications so shellac is crafted from the bark of the trees so this type of trees where the female lag bug so this female lag bug is called as a um, uh, cassica laca so cassica laca is the name for this uh, uh, female lag bug so also it is also known as lacky for laca so lacky for laca or the cassica laca all these are the names for this bug so this bugs will be secreting or excreting so in the form of a tunnel on the tree on the branch of a tree they will be excreting their waste all that one so in uh, how they are excreting usually before excreting they will be sucking the sap of the tree sap of the tree will be they will be sucking sucking and then they will be excreting a sticky lac so this usually this lac will be a sticky compound almost constantly it will be sticking through uh, towards this tree so the raw uh, whatever the raw shellac is there after excreting on the tree so which contains many uh, bark shavings okay so this bark shavings tree bark will be there this bark shavings and also the lag bugs okay whatever the lag bugs are there that lag bugs are also sticking to this one so usually they will be removed during the scraping okay they will be scraping this lag bug so uh, this whatever the lag sac is there that they will be scraping and is placed in a canvas like tube so this canvas like tube they will be scraping so this is uh, uh, so lag bug uh, composition of lag bug and lag or also the scraping of this uh, some uh, tree barks okay all these components will be present this will be scraped using some knife like material after uh, scraping that one they will be transferred to the canvas like material so this canvas like material usually that canvas will be looking like a socks like of material socks our shoe socks so into the canvas they will be just dropping to that one so this canvas the uh, shellac to liquefy that one it sweeps out of the canvas whenever we are giving some heat treatment so that canvas tube is heated okay using some suitable medium whenever they are heated so they the lag bugs are leaving from that one and it is also separating out the whatever the tree bugs this box whatever the box which are there in that one leaving behind uh, all the this lag bugs and also the tree box whatever the um, shellac obtain that shellac will be just uh, uh, leaving this leaving behind this will be just uh, extracted outside so the thick and sticky shellac is dried into a flat sheet and also broken into a flakes so this shellac whatever this guy is just uh, scraping on this canvas so that will be just dried uh, using some heat uh, suitable dryer then afterwards they will be uh, according to the requirement they will be cutting as a sheets or in some flakes or some flat sheets they will be preparing like this so preparation usually involves uh, the operations like they have to scrap this entirely during the scraping some part of this canvas uh, some part of this tree bark will be coming and also this lag bugs will also be coming so whenever after scraping this one you have to transform this into some canvas like tube so after this canvas like tube will be treated using some heat treatment given some heat treatment after giving that heat treatment uh, uh, the lag bugs will be escaping from that one and also it will be leaving behind some of the uh, this bark tree box so the tree box is unwanted in the uh, shellac preparation so the shellac is just obtained and they will be formed as a flakes they will be dried and cut it down into a flakes or some suitable compounds so shellac is this so shellac preparation is there i would like to show one video regarding this one Can you able to hear this sound? Audio? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Since I just watched this video. Hello, 
I'm DJ Velji. A short time ago, my company, Shellac Finishes, released its first How is it manufactured? So harvest in Princeton, and around it is the forest. The trees that you see at the base of the mountain are host trees that are used for the cultivation of lac. Yes, lac does grow on trees. The three most common host trees are the palash, kusum, and bear, or plum tree. Humta Forest once had sizable populations of wildlife, including tigers, but not anymore. Not far from Humta Mountain is the village of Bundu, with a population of about 30 families. The villagers build their own houses, including the roof tiles that you see here. They grow vegetables for themselves as well as for the market. Additionally, most of them are also lac cultivators. For now, they are the keepers of our forest. As long as the lac is in demand, there is an incentive for them to cultivate it. If demand falls, these very forests will be cut to create space for crop cultivation. On my right is the village headman, and on the left is my guide, Mr. Sharma, who buys the lac harvest. Let's see how lac is made. We start with the trees. The palash is the most common host tree. In the eastern regions of India, palash forests are plentiful. The palash tree is also called the flame of the forest. It is in full bloom during the month of February. I remember when I started in 2009 and became an entrepreneur, I was completely... During this time, the flowers are collected to extract the red dye used for commercial purposes. The other common host tree is the bear or plum tree. The fruits are sold commercially also. The palash and bear tree lac is called rangini. The literal translation means colorful. The lac produced from these two host trees contains more color and wax. The best lac comes from the kusum tree. This one is 100 years old. The lac produced by the kusum tree is called kusumi. It has a light golden color and contains the least amount of wax. Let's take a look at the insects that make lac. They belong to a family of scale insects called Lacifer laca. This is what the male lac bug looks like. The male bug plays a minor part in the production of shellac. His only role is procreation. The female looks quite different from the male. She's the one that does most of the work, producing the lac resin. The cultivation process begins when live insects from the previous season are placed in bags that are tied to the host trees. Large numbers of tiny red larvae emerge from each female and settle on the tender new growth of the host tree. Then the larvae have fixed their positions and inserted their proboscis into the tree they begin to secrete a dark red chitinous scale and a yellow to reddish substance called lac resin. The insect matures under the protective covering of the resin, which becomes hard. The larvae grow inside the cell and become sexually mature male and female insects in about eight weeks. The female cells remain fixed to the twig. The male insects crawl out of their cells to fertilize several females and die. The female insects grow in size to accommodate their large number of eggs. The production of resin and wax now increases at a faster rate. In 14 weeks, the females lay eggs again. The new larvae hatch and emerge to begin a new life cycle of about six months. Thus, the insect completes two life cycles in a year, yielding two lac crops. It takes about 300,000 insects to produce one kilogram of shellac. This is what fully encrusted trees look like. The white threads seen on the encrustations are wax secreted by the insects through their breathing and anal pores. As the life cycle of the insect comes to an end, the secretion of wax decreases. In a few days, harvesting will begin. The branches of the trees get pruned twice a year. Here is a short video of the pruning.
the lac encrusted branches are scraped and the dried lac is accumulated. This is called stick lac. It contains the dead insects and the red dye that they have produced along with the tree bark and other debris. The stick lac is broken up and cleaned to get rid of the debris. After cleaning, it is called seed lac. This is what seed lac looks like. Seed lac is sold on the open market to middlemen or to a mass purchaser like my guide, Mr. Sharma. This is Mr. Gupta, a close friend as well as a shellac producer. Let's go to his factory and see how the shellac is extracted from seed lac. This is Mr. Gupta's factory where he produces handmade and machine made shellac. The seed lac is cleaned once again to get rid of all remaining debris. I found this photo in a book published in 1930. The cleaning is done by hand in the same way even today. Piles of seed lac are cleaned one portion at a time to remove all the debris. The seed lac is put into vats with water and for just $67, you can make as many videos as you want and you never need to pick up a can. It's crushed to break open the pods to release the red dye. The dye is used as coloring matter in the textile, printing and food industry. In Mr. Gupta's factory, a mechanical process is used for breaking open the seed lac pods. A large mechanized drum with steel balls is used for this purpose. After washing, the seed lac is spread out to dry. The seed lac is now ready for processing to extract the shellac. This is a photo from a book printed in 1935 showing how shellac was made. Do you see any difference? It's still the same today. The seed lac is put into a cloth bag. One end is held in front of an oven and the other is attached to a crank which is gradually turned. Heat from the oven melts the seed lac which is forced out through the cloth bag. The molten shellac is dropped onto a tin sheet forming small discs referred to as button lac. Before it leaves the factory, it is stamped with the company logo. The cloth bag that was used in the process is cleaned and recycled. In another process, the molten shellac is spread over a porcelain cylinder filled with hot water. The worker spreads the shellac over the cylinder with a palm leaf and then wipes it to get a shine. After the sheet has cooled a bit, it is pulled off the cylinder. He then grabs the sheet with his hands, toes and mouth to stretch it as much as he can. Once cool, the sheet is broken to make flakes. The impurity that stays in the cloth bag after the heat extraction is called kirilak. It still has quite a bit of shellac in it and is used to make garnet shellac, a darker variety. Shellac is also extracted from seed lac by machine. First, it is heated over steam pipes and then pressed for extraction. The extracted shellac is pressed in between rollers to create a thin sheet. This is broken up to make flakes. Here is a video of a machine in operation. Pardon the quality. Lighting is kept to a minimum to keep the factory cool. You are seeing the manufacture of waxy shellac. A small percentage of woodworkers continue to use it. I recommend using DVAC shellac 
for its improved moisture resistance and durability. It is made by a process where waxy shellac is dissolved in a solvent to extract the wax. At shellac finishes, we carry five different varieties of fresh DVAX shellac flakes. You can find us on the web at shellacfinishes.com. I hope you've enjoyed this brief presentation. Okay. Uh, I think uh, you understood now clearly. Yes, sir.